Hi, it's Thursday, June 4th, 2020. My name is Noah Seeley, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be reviewing a machine learning related paper. We're still going through the series of papers relating to CNNs and visualization techniques using machine learning. Today, I'm going to be discussing a paper by the team of Zeeler and Fergus called Visualizing and Understanding Convolutional Networks. A few days ago, if you remember, we covered AlexNet, and this paper is a good follow-up to that paper. Basically, they are going to deeply analyze CNNs such as AlexNet to try to make a better understanding of how CNNs function. There's a lot of interesting ways they were able to kind of reverse engineer the CNN, which led to some pretty compelling insight, which actually helped them build a CNN which could outperform AlexNet. And with that, let's dive into the paper itself. So this paper starts with praising recently made CNNs, such as the AlexNet architecture. It reiterates that much of this new success is coming from the increase in training data for many training data sets, the rise of more complex GPUs, and from what we saw in the AlexNet paper, new regularization techniques, such as Dropout. Now, if you're interested about any of those, you can go back to my latest video on AlexNet to check them out. They say while this all works very well, they do not fully understand the underlying concepts on why they actually work. The theory goes that if they were able to achieve a deep understanding of this, they would be able to construct a CNN architecture that outperforms AlexNet. So the main goal of this paper was kind of to reverse engineer previous CNNs to achieve a deeper understanding of them, and then to build one with this newfound deeper understanding that will hopefully perform better than any that they've seen before. Throughout this paper, what stood out to me the most was the reverse engineering of the network itself. As we know, a CNN model has multiple hidden layers, some convolution filters, some pooling layers, and even some fully connected layers at the end. I'm going to discuss the various methods they used while reversing each type of layer in order to understand how they would work. Before I get into that, I should say that these methods were all done in another architecture called the decon net. As the name implies, this was used to kind of reverse the work of a trained CNN. The model actually requires no training, but is basically stuck at the butt end of a convolution network and would basically analyze its results. What happens is that before the convnet reaches the fully connected layer at the end, the deconvnet would just take in the input as an image or feature map that was just presented to the convolution network. The image will work its way through the layers of the deconv net, and through this, the researchers would have a better visualization of the convolutional network's operations. With this deconv net, researchers could even analyze the effects of specific conv net layers by basically letting only that specific layer's work be passed into the deconv net. In other words, they just turned everything else in the CNN off. We'll later see how this helped them visualize which parts of the CNN architecture was responsible for what. So without any further ado, let's look at some of these deconvnet layers. We'll start with what they call an unpooling layer. This served the purpose of reversing the pooling operations that we see in the CNN models. This paper admits that a pooling operation is actually non-invertible. This is because they were simply unable to generalize the space in the image that was lost during the original pooling operations. This is obvious as the model is not advanced enough or may ever even be to be able to guess well enough what those portions of the image were from the original image. And in theory, it wouldn't even really make sense for them to be able to generate that type of data. But what the researchers could do with this unpooling layer was record the areas yielded by each pooling region in a set of switch variables. These switch variables are used to kind of place the reconstructions from the layer into appropriate locations. As the paper, as the paper states, this would preserve some of the structure of the original image. Next, the rectification layer basically puts the input through a ReLU activation function. There is a bit less information on this layer in the paper, but it seems to be required because they were aware that the analyzed CNN models, such as AlexNet, use ReLU layers as well. This would also ensure that the feature maps are now always positive while preparing to be used as input into the next layer. And the next layer is called the filtering layer. As we know, the convolution networks use train convolution filters on the image, usually as their first set of operations. In order to reverse this filtering, the deconv net will finish using a filtering layer of its own. The filtering layer basically will use the transposed versions of those originally trained filters. The paper states that in practice, this involves flipping each filter vertically and horizontally. Ultimately, this operation is the final layer in the deconv net paper and will yield portions of the original input image with structured weights according to their contribution to the original feature activation. So yeah, there we have it, a fully working model that can reverse the work of a convolutional network. Okay, well, not completely, but it did give researchers enough information to be able to extract information to approximate which parts of the original input image each layer of the convolution layers were processing. So now that we know how they did it, I want to quickly talk about some of the more interesting findings they came up with. Like from the AlexNet video, 
I think I'm going to stick with some of the more general findings rather than discuss the specific architecture that was made relatively a while ago. But once again, I'm willing to make a separate video on it if anybody wants it. For now, it's just important to know that with the findings I'm about to present, they were able to make a CNN that could outperform the ones they analyzed. So I guess it's a bit of a spoiler, but this whole thing worked. Let's rewind a bit and go over what the DeConvNet was able to uncover about these convolution and pooling layers. So one interesting insight that this paper offered was that they were able to find that the CNN had kind of a hierarchical nature of identifying features in the network. As we can see in this figure shown in the paper, we can see that each layer learned to correspond to different parts of the image. For example, layer 2 responds to corners, layer 3 captured similar textures, and on and on throughout the layers. They were able to find this by, as I mentioned earlier, isolating single layers in the CNN and using the DeconvNet to find exactly what those specific layers would look at. Another insight they found was that there is a greater invariance at the higher levels. This basically means that as we go into the lower level layers, they get much more specific in what they would be able to identify in an image. We can even see this if we compare the findings in this figure at layer 2 and at layer 5. Layer 2 would really just find corners, which is important, but not very specific. Then we can see that layer 5 is a lot more specialized as it can pick up on things such as dog faces. This is less important for everything else that isn't a dog face, but for those specific images, it's a very powerful and important layer. This also led to high layers needing much more training epochs in order to converge compared to lower layers. This perhaps shows that those layers could pick up on much more general features, like corners, would need more time to train as they have a wider range of possibilities. Another point which supports higher levels being more general is that small changes to the images affected the lower, more specific levels much more than they affected the higher, more general layers. Overall, you can get an idea of how these things would manage to help researchers visualize how CNNs are able to process images and make predictions for them. There are a few things I didn't go over in this paper, so as always, I've cited it in the description below. But I hope you guys found my discussion of what I found interesting, interesting as well. <laughs> it's always important to take a step back and make sure there's a deep understanding of what these very complex topics are about. And this paper did just that. With that deeper understanding, they were able to push CNN research even farther and to even more success. And I think that's awesome. And yeah, it was just a really interesting paper, a bit unique to other things that I've read. And I think a great place of literature for anyone who's just getting into the theory behind CNNs and visualization techniques in machine learning. Well, that concludes my discussion on this paper. As always, I've linked the citation in the description below. If there's anything you feel I've missed or something I got wrong, please feel free to comment it down below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.